welcome everyone uh, all the speakers so before we kick start another session for today i would like to give you all a quick brief about pragmatic leaders uh, we built pragmatic leaders as a bridge for mid career technology professionals to confidently change career roles uh, we are on a journey to link training to employment and build holistically better alternatives to current alternatives in specialized business roles uh, like product growth marketing and more we run pay after placement programs in product management for working professionals who are looking to transition and upskill uh, so with that unique approach we have uh, it's we have resulted in 79% placement success and with an average 50% salary hikes our learners are now building product for amazing companies like paypal walmart labs amazon casa one and more um, you can check out all the our programs and other details on our website i am adding link of our website in chat section and uh, you can all join our exclusive uh, product community on slack to network and stay updated with our upcoming events i'll add link for the slack community as well in chat section so with that note let's begin uh, today's session as well today we have uh, we have amazing speakers with us we have kevin de souza with us he is vp of product at pragmatic leaders he brings in 17 plus years of product management experience in uh, and business leadership experience in multiple industries he has built valuable products for multiple brands and have delivered solutions to scale those products uh, so we welcome and we are really excited for another session with all of you today i would like to hand over the session back to kevin to speak more on our current product management landscape you peers thank you for that introduction and welcome again to all the uh, wonderful speakers i see gokul here uh, hi gokul uh, the other audiences i would request participants to turn on cameras give us some motivation we're looking at names and the microphone red microphones with a slash on it so let's see let's see some faces at least yeah uh so let's move forward and today i have a topic that i i i honestly keep close to my heart the reason being in product management this is i think the ideology that i work with and uh, design thinking right so that that that's what uh is is a framework is a mindset is an ethos so yesterday when i spoke about product management as a mindset uh today it's it's the the start of that mindset and i like to work, approach or pretty much all my problems uh in product management through design thinking now this is uh you know it's been a very buzzword it's uh, a very in word practiced very differently uh, by different people but uh, there is something that i sort of work with uh, a methodology that i work with and that's what i quickly want to run through in today's session right so what i am going to focus upon is design thinking that is user centric uh, there is another one which i'll talk to you in the end of this uh, part, uh, part but what i am going to talk about and what is pretty much used everywhere is user centric and what we mean by that is in simple lingo we are looking at what our user wants what is what drives our user what problems are we solving for our user right uh, and that's how we like to approach every problem or every product that we build is focused upon value that a user can derive from it what are the steps that i look at uh and this is something that i like to do in product management i like to learn new concepts you know through experience through learning uh through speaking with my uh, peers uh, colleagues uh and then i try try building mental mental maps of those and this is one of the mental maps that i use the first thing i start with is a what is question right uh where do we stand i mean there might be a product that i need to create or develop or problem i need to solve but the first thing is where do we stand where what's the current landscape uh what's the current situation and gather as much information and then i try look at what if right uh and the what ifs are what possible solutions i could come up for those scenarios those problems that were defined previously the third thing i look at is from that what if bucket that i have created and that could be real anything you know i mean it could just mean that i am going to create uh Uh, a supersonic aircraft uh, for a solution of logistics right but it not it may not be real so the what ifs could be unreal also but they are, they need to be there because that's how you sort of open up and open up broad thinking what wows uh, come down to 
ideas that you really or your team really feels would move the needle with the customer and for the business also. Finally, when we look at what for the business, uh, we look at two things. One is the viability, uh, that's the business viability. Two is the feasibility, which is the technical feasibility of you producing that outcome, right? Can my company, do we have the resources and capabilities to build that? If not, can we bring that capability? If we don't, if we can't bring that capability, then we rather not touch it because that's something beyond our scope. Uh, I'm used to building a, a Hyundai. I can't plan on straight away building a Tesla, right? So I really need to know if I can do that. So that's the what works. And finally, I go to what next. Uh, what next is more of introspection, extrospection, where you check what you've done, whether you need to improvise, whether you need to pivot or whether you need to kill it, right? But that's the what next. This is the broader line of steps. I'm quickly going to go through each one of them and speak on some tools on each one of them. Uh, before, yeah, before that, the five steps uh, of in, in more simpler terms is empathize. That is the what is. Uh, that's where you derive inspiration from. Unless you don't bring in the empathy, unless you don't put yourself in the user's shoe, you're not going to be able to you know, list down the what is. So empathize. Then we go ahead and define. We define the problem statement primarily. That's what we want to define our scope of work, our metrics of success. Those are things we want to define early on before we start building. I mean, we need to know our goal. Uh, or objective. If not, then we do not know where we're going. Uh, this is where we ideate with the team, with our users, test users. We ideate with them uh, to see what works for them, right? What What is actually going to really, really solve their problems. Uh, we quickly build uh, this prototypes. I mean, there are different ways of approaching this. We can have working prototypes. Uh, you would have heard of something called rapid prototypes. Uh, then we test those and we repeat the cycle thereafter. The test is basically checking if we are on track. What if and what wows, did it really make sense? And that's where what we test. If it falls short, we improvise. If it falls way too short, we look at other alternatives. If it's doing well, we look at options that we can improvise on, right? Let's go through the steps quickly. The what is, which is empathize. Uh, I like to look at this from one angle. Uh, yesterday we discussed about creating personas uh, and how we identify the pain points uh, and touch points. Uh, here is another approach I like to use as part of design thinking is the think, see, feel, do approach. Write down everything your persona thinks, feels, sees, does, right? List that down. That's your primary approach that you want to capture, uh, information that you want to capture uh, about each of your personas, not just one, each of the personas that you have defined. Uh, these may be used during product development, may not be used, but you're still capturing them nevertheless. In terms of tools that I use here, and uh, everybody generally, you may be wondering why is secondary first and primary second? Because normally in school till now, we have always been taught primary comes first, secondary comes second. In marketing research, in user research, this is the opposite. Secondary research means data that is not proprietary, that is not necessarily owned by you, uh, and which is got from the outside. Uh, and that, those are studies and reports, market research agencies who would give you some of these studies uh, and expert interviews. And these are secondary research that you would do because these are easily available. These are cheaper to achieve. And then you would move to primary research. That's your core research work. And you would do that by doing user interviews, immersive experience. When I say immersive experience, you actually say you're designing a product for a cab driver. You would actually go and take a cab ride uh, with different personas, right? Different types of cab drivers could be a point A to point B, intercity, interstate, intrastate. You would do all of that. That's called immersive experience. You're actually feeling or seeing what that person is going through and you're making your notes throughout this process. And then, of course, if you have past data, if you're improvising a product, you would have past data. You bring that into your primary research because that's your own data. This is the what is. And that would help you build a what if in terms of first, what you would do is take all that you've done in what is, bring it to your team, brainstorm, and then figure out what 
if you created a solution to this what if this is the problem things like those right uh one way i like to approach this is the first thing after brainstorming or probably even during or before brainstorming i like to pen down on whiteboards i draw very funny drawings but you can see one of those guys on the on the picture on the screen is drawing something uh you you creating something on whiteboard you're doing a user journey uh, on a map on a whiteboard you're saying this is where you start from this is how the user moves through the entire process of that particular what is that you have defined right so you create those user journey maps uh this is not in order all these points are not in order these are all the points that you need to work on uh the objective is you're trying to create uh trying to go into a deep dive analysis of their root cause or their problems and what you come out at the end are problem statements right you may have one you may have many but put them there uh what you do with each problem statement is that you also figure out the current alternatives right you just don't leave them as problem statements i mean they, there is a problem it's getting solved in some way uh for example uh, if i don't have a uh, you know an an erp or an attendant system digital attendant system i will probably just be using a register i don't need a competitor to give me another software i can just use a plain old pen and paper to to make notes of those for the attendance of uh, staff or teams so those are your substitutes so you need to list down the current alternatives how they are solving those problems currently and that helps you in what that helps you in ideating to recommend value propositions right so this is where you are able to now say that this is the problem this is how they have been solving it i can solve it better because you already know you have done your research you already know that yes this is indeed a problem and this solution will will is something that you think see it's not tested yet but you think this solution will help this customer right so you recommend value propositions again you have for each problem statement you have a different value prop right from these value props now as i said you for each problem statement you have a different value prop you actually then start combining those and see as a single set of feature what jobs need to be done to achieve the larger or or solve a larger problem right so you list down jobs to be done and all these jobs to be done are nothing but product features right that's that's what you're talking about uh and there is a way that this can be approached but it's i'm not covering that here uh it's by itself a very uh, detailed topic finally we go back to the user journey maps that we had created previously we take these jobs to be done and we plug them in there right we may be able to break it down into sub features sub uh tasks for our team and sub experiences but it's very important to plug it back into that user journey map that you would have created now once you've done with this uh ideally there is one step that you go here and do is you go back and validate it with the test users that you had you ask them about these problems you you tell them about these problems you, you recommend these suggestions and you say how would you feel about these right so that's that's another little deeper way of engaging with them and establishing that okay i think these users will like this and validating it even before you go into building one thing keep in mind the test define test metrics this is something that you should do at this stage the moment you create your value propositions and jobs to be done you should define a test metric uh, a kpi that would be linked to, to that feature so that you're able to uh, use this in future you know that this is how you are going to track your product right next we're going to go into now we know what we want to build we've we've thought about it we have our test metrics ready we have our jobs to be done our feature list ready we start building but not the final product and this is what yesterday amit was mentioning about uh, the mvp right we we are going into an mvp but it's not necessarily the product or the final thing it's a process that we're going to follow and we start building and the first thing since you have your consumer journey maps you start building wireframes wireframes of how that communication how that interaction is going to be there and this wireframes primarily are for digital products uh, or or products that are going into production uh, physical products there uh, and they both get approached a little differently but wireframes are a good way to start as a product manager you are more concerned about wireframes your you, your actual user interface will be taken care by the ux team you need to be aware of it but they will take care of it um 
we build from wireframes the you you know the ux team can work on building working models and mockups uh and finally along with them and the tech team you go ahead and you build a prototype and that's yet yeah, primarily your mvp you build it for a small subset of people that are your test users that you had in the beginning and you run usability tests with them to see where you stand and while you're doing this you're constantly testing the test metrics that you mentioned that's why i highlighted that that's core to the entire uh, issue right you you need to get those test metrics check for those so for each test metric you would have a uh, metric your uh, a threshold for success a threshold for improvement or further research or a threshold for failed status right and you're checking that metrics constantly while you're testing your initial mvp or product uh, or idea and then you iterate back and this goes back to the beginning again and you again flow down and you you know you're trying to build a better product there on uh one of the things you do here is build a priority list based on what you've learned in the past already and you constantly keep updating this priority list and as a product manager this is something that you own right you would you would move things that would impact the user and your business to the top of the list to build um and uh there are different ways of approaching priority prioritization but this is pretty much how you would go through in a cycle what next is the last part of it of course after the test results the what next comes in based on what you've got from your test results uh, after you have built something you could look at giving incremental improvements right so those are uh, minor improvements so you've created an app for example now you want to add a particular small feature or a button on it or a particular transactional uh, feature in it you're adding those those are in incremental improvements but there are times when you just feel that you need you know you need a new business model altogether because i think there is more to offer and that's when you have radical improvements uh, and this has a very different approach approach again uh, this becomes a completely separate vertical altogether and that's how companies actually start creating product verticals because they have radical improvements in business model um and that's pretty much what happens on a design thinking cycle uh from here if you look back again to what is as i told you in the beginning there is something that we are approaching right now is user centric design thinking the world will i feel slowly move to sustainable design thinking and when what i mean by that i'm not going to go into detail but one word should give you an idea it's called planet centric design thinking we will talk about that some other time but for now that's all for design thinking